And joining us now is Captain Josh Kyle with the Riley County Police Department. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So um, still a continuing big issue, um, fentanyl. In the past two weeks, a 13-year-old and a 16-year-old overdosed from fentanyl. So we've heard about fake pills, but how else are people coming across fentanyl? Well, that's our best information right now is that it's through fake pills. Uh, they're very difficult to determine. They look just like prescription medication. In fact, some people will pit prescription medication photos and prescription meds up on the screen and compare it right next to the fake pills. And then there's a debate about which one's fake and which one's prescription. So for lay people like ourselves, you can't even tell unless you do, any, do some kind of analysis on it. So they're very dangerous. And you guys are mainly seeing pills, but are there other forms that this can come in? Can it just be on a table and somebody touches it and then what, uh, tell us what that's like. It's possible. Uh, other agencies have come across fentanyl in a number of forms, usually some form of powder, and it is very dangerous. It can get into your skin and, and cause overdoses that way. But typically what we see are the pills. Okay. And now um, how can kids or even parents report activity involving fentanyl? We have a number of ways that you can report. We even have Crime Stoppers, so feel free to report online. That's fine. Uh, or call Crime Stoppers. Uh, we have a number that's available on our website. If you look up Raleigh County Police Department Crime Stoppers, all the information you need is right there. And can people still stay anonymous when they report this? Absolutely. That's the whole idea behind Crime Stoppers is that you don't have to give your name. Okay. Well, switching gears, um, a community survey is now available from now until December 31st. So what's the purpose of this survey? We really want to hear from the public. We want to know what they think about everything from traffic enforcement to do they feel safe in our community to what do they think our CPD should focus on in the future. The information that we get from this survey, which ends uh, on December 31st, is going to be used during our planning cycle. And so it will really uh, determine a lot of what we focus on in 2023. Is this the first time you guys have done a survey like this? We've done surveys in the past, but they tend to be more customer service oriented. How did we behave? Did you like our professionalism? That sort of thing. And that's certainly part of the survey. But the main difference with this one is we're asking a lot of questions of the public about what they think we should focus on. Okay. And where can people find this survey? It's available on our website. It's also available so through social media. We have a QR code and we're going to start posting some stickers here pretty soon around the community. And all you have to do is scan it with your phone and take the survey. It takes about four minutes. Okay, yeah, I believe we just showed that uh, graphic, but we will have that on our website as well so people can scan that. Um, switching gears to Safe Cam, that started in April of last year. First, for maybe people who don't know what this is, tell us exactly what Safe Cam is. So, uh, Safe Cam was introduced by Captain Greg Steer. This was a project that he worked on. And essentially what Safe Cam does is it allows people to notify the police department that you have a camera and that if something should happen in the community, uh, you know that there's a camera there, police department. We don't monitor the camera. There's no way for us to determine what's going on. It's just simply notifying us there's a camera in the area. So if a crime should occur or some other accident or something like that, that we need additional information, we know who to contact who has cameras. Rather than going through a canvas of door to door, uh, it saves us a lot of time and helps us to make cases go a little bit quicker. And is this just for outdoor cameras? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and you said it's confidential too. So um, how can police access it if you guys need to um, look at footage? Well, the confidentiality comes in the fact that we don't monitor the camera at all. The only time that uh, we see what's on the camera is what you send to us. What you're notifying us about is that you actually have a camera. Okay, how can people access it? Or, uh, sorry, how can people register for yeah, it? Look up uh, RCPD's website under Safe Cam, and you'll be able to uh, put all the information necessary for us to know that you have a camera in the area. Is there a fee people need to pay for this, or is it free? Absolutely not. Completely free. Okay. Well, that is all the time we have. Captain Josh Kyle, thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks so much.